Do you guys think it's weird that you don't need any kind of certification to take a baby home? <laughs> Is that crazy? Every other thing that we do in this country as adults, you need to get a certification. Like, you want to drive? You need a license. We need to send somebody out and make sure you're cool to drive. You want to rescue a dog tomorrow? You can't just go down to the animal shelter and say, hey, I'm here to rescue an animal. No, they don't just give you a dog and send you home. There's paperwork involved. And then they send a human to your house to check it out and make sure it's cool for a dog to live there. But when you have a baby, they're just watching the clock. Uh, it's been 26 hours. Go ahead. You could take this baby. <laughs> You've been a kid before, right? Yeah, okay, you'll be fine. <laughs> Whatever your parents did, download it into this one. It'll be cool. Let me into my zone. Let me let me into my zone. Let me into my zone. Please don't let me. So I'm from San Diego, California. Don't be too loud. Don't be too loud about that. I'm from San Diego. I've met a bunch of you Texans out in San Diego, and whenever I meet you, you're very loud and very bold about how you're from a different country. <laughs> I'm from a different country. I'm like, where are you from? Texas. <laughs> I never got it. I never got it until I started going on tour, and then I came down here, and I was like, yeah, it's different down here. It's different. <laughs> this is a different country. Now, whenever I come here, I make sure I bring my passport. This is international travel. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I like your guys' vibe a lot better than my country. My country's a little uptight. We're a little full of ourselves. We're very proud to be green. We're green. We recycle. That's how you could spot a Californian in Texas when they're bringing bottles to you. Excuse me, where's the recycle bin? <laughs> You're from California, aren't you? Yeah. I like the vibe here. I like your guys' energy. The vibe down here in this country is like, listen, we're not going to be around when this rock explodes. <laughs> Double bag everything. Whenever people tell me they're coming here and they've never been to Texas before, they're like, where should we go? What should we do? I tell them the best thing that's happening in this country. My number one place that I recommend people go to, I go, listen, you land in Texas, you get a rental car, and you drive your ass directly to H-E-B. Just go to H-E-B. <laughs> they're like, a grocery store? You don't understand. This is more... I love H-E-B. That's my first stop every time I come here. We were in some city, and I saw something happening in the H-E-B that I have not seen in my country for quite some time. I almost cried. As an adult, I almost cried. I saw free plastic bags. I almost cried. <laughs> Bucky's too. What the hell is that? We have to pay for bags in California. You have to pay. Here, they were free. And you guys don't even understand how, you don't even understand how dope that is. You guys get to do something here that I haven't been able to do in my country for quite some time. You send your kids into the store, like, look at, make sure you get extra plastic bags. We need trash bags for the bathroom. I don't know if you guys are getting dad energy from me, but I'm a dad. I got uh, two kids at home. I have a three-year-old son and an eight-week-old daughter at the house. Yeah. And I just want to stop really quick, and, and uh, I think we should get a big round of applause and salute to all the dads in the room today. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. We're glad you're here. Hell yeah. Also, I want to shout out all the single moms in here that are wearing both hats. Happy Father's Day to you, too. I'm so pumped that I got a daughter, man. So pumped. Like, I get to be a girl dad. I've, I've found out through social media that most guys my age don't want daughters, right? They don't want daughters at all. And they put it on social media. They put their gender reveal party on social media. These guys do it knowing there's two options. <laughs> Lubbock, there's two options I can come out of here. And the guy knows he wants one of those options but he's gonna participate in this gender reveal to keep the lady happy 
and she tries to make the party cool for him. So she's like, babe, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a balloon down the range, fill it with dust, and then you take your gun, pew, pew, and you're gonna shoot <laughs> the balloon, and the dust will either be pink or blue. You wanna do this? And he's like, he just heard he could shoot his gun, so he's like, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> he only wants the boy, Texas, he only wants the boy, and he gets out there, camera's rolling, pew, pew, pink dust, and this guy doesn't even try to hide the disappointment. <laughs> no! No! Bro, do you understand how the internet works? Based on your whole deal, your daughter is gonna have a phone five years from today. She's gonna be able to look up this video and then not respect you for the rest of her life. I wanted a girl so bad. I can't wait to do girl activities that I want to do with my daughter and blame it on her. That's what I'm looking forward to. Girl activities I want to do and blame it on her. Manny Petty Thursdays, babe, this is for you. This is for you. Front row at Taylor Swift, this is for you, babe. This is for you. All my like dad friends now, they're like, oh, but now you got daughter problems. You got daughter problems, get ready. I don't care about daughter problems. There are parents in here right now, you know the real problems I'm having now is new baby problems. That's the problems I'm worried about currently, new baby problems. And it's not diapers like people think. Oh, poop diapers, no. I got new baby problems, which is friends coming to the house wanting to hold my new baby. <laughs> think about your friends. Think about your friends. Not all of your friends are qualified to be around or hold a baby. But when they find out that you have one at the house, they want to come check it out. <laughs> Can I hold the baby? You guys know this friend. They don't have kids, but when it's your kid, they're like, yeah, I want to test it out. What does it do? What does it do? And you're a parent, that protect gene kicks in right away and you know you don't want this person touching your baby. But it's your friend so you're not allowed to be like, no, hell no. I'm on my second kid now, I've figured out the most polite way to tell your friends they can't hold your baby. Lubbock, take this home with you, okay, this is what I do. My friends wanna hold the baby, I give them the test. I'm like, hey, before you hold the baby, let me see your phone really quick, give me your phone. Yeah, I'll take a picture, give me your phone really quick, give me your phone. And if there's any cracks on that cell phone, <laughs> I'm sorry, you can't hold the baby. All right, if you as an adult human can't control this phone that has no arms, no leg, no neck, you can't hold this baby. There's no OtterBox case for this baby. <laughs> I can't put my baby in a jar of rice when you drop her on the ground. <laughs> There's no Apple Care with this baby. Butterfingers, you stay right over there. That's what I need. <laughs> I love being a parent, though. I love being in the fraternity. Parents, tell me if this is normal behavior, okay? I got furious at my three-year-old the other day, furious at a three-year-old for something I think is gonna happen in the future. Is that normal? <laughs> yes? Okay, cool. I'll explain to you the situation, okay? My kids are mixed, just like me. Black and Asian, if you're trying to figure my face out. That's what's happening up here. It's <laughs> a lot of laughter. You guys were wondering, what is he? My kids are this, half black and half Asian, and they're half white, all right? My mom is white. Now, when you're part black, when you have any black in you, the kind of hair that you get is a mixed bag. You can get anything, right? You could get curly hair, you could get wavy hair. Half of your head could be curly, half could be wavy. <laughs> so we haven't cut my son's hair, because I want to know first, what kind of hair does this kid have? What kind of hair does he have? The kind of hair that he has is important to me, because the kind of hair you have dictates which barbershop you go to. I want them to come to my barbershop. Men in here know there's two barbershops in this country. There's a barbershops with clippers and sports on, and there's just barbershops with scissors and I assume cucumber water. I'm not sure what's happening <laughs> in that other place. My son's got white hair. He's not coming to my barbershop. He's gonna need some scissors and a comb. His hair's long. 
Here's when I got pissed, okay? The other day, he's playing with his trucks like a normal little boy, right? And his hair, his long white hair just fell into his face. And we have not taught him this at all, but I was watching him, and I watched this boy out of instinct. He took his index finger, and he tucked the hair. <laughs> and just as a reflex, he took the other index finger, and he tucked the hair on the other side. And I was furious, Lubbock. I was in the red, pissed. Because that's my son now. This is my guy right here. This is why I'm super mad, you guys. We live in San Diego. This dude looks like me with a white face. And he's going to be a teenager before I know it. So I know for a fact, one day soon, this kid is going to flip-flop his white face right up to me. And he's gonna say something so insolent it just sets me off. Like, you don't even get it, Dad, and then tuck the hair behind. <laughs> <sighs> my room is my space, Dad, and then tuck the hair. Hoverboard away. I don't know how white kids get around the house. I realize my kids are gonna have a better life than me. And that's what you should want for your kids. I mean, they have a better life than you, right? My parents got divorced when I was a little kid, so I came from a single parent household, one mom, four babies. I'm a man that was raised by a woman. I'm very proud of that, and I made it. I'm here. All right, my kids live in a two parent household, loving situation, very different, very different upbringing. Right, here's what I realized. I grew up as a very poor kid. This is what I realized. When you're poor in America, that transcends race. Right? It doesn't matter what color you are. If you're poor, that comes first. I'm Mexican. No, 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 you're poor. Mexican-American. I'm black. No, 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 you're poor African-American. Poor comes first. Doesn't matter what color you are, you share so much in common with every other poor person. I don't know if all of our poor parents took the same poor parenting class or if they got the same poor parenting handout, but we all share a lot, right? And the real job of the poor parent is to trick their kid into not knowing they're poor for as long as possible. <laughs> right, so they come up, they're geniuses. They come up with like, do you guys remember when your parents started chopping up hot dogs and putting it in all the food? <laughs> and selling it as something special? Here, it's mac and cheese with chopped up hot dogs. Is it my birthday? Yeah, it's your birthday. That's why we're doing this. You can't go to the amusement park all the time. Like, my mom couldn't afford that. So the poor parent just, like, makes regular stuff, the amusement park. Like, my mom used to tell us, like, hey, if you're good, if you're good this weekend, this weekend we'll ride the bus. from the beginning to the end <laughs> and back. I love every single one of you that laughed at that. The people not laughing don't understand what's happening right now. This woman is a genius. She got her kids to be on good behavior for the opportunity to ride public transit. And you don't know, as a poor kid, you didn't know you were doing poor activities until you went to school and shared on Monday. Kids are honest, they let you know. I'll never forget it. Went to school, it was some Monday morning, elementary school, the teacher was like, what did everyone do for the weekend? And this kid was like, we went to the zoo, and we're like, oh my God, that's awesome. This kid, what'd you guys do? We went to SeaWorld, <gasps> you saw Shamu, amazing. Mel, what did you do this weekend? And with the same SeaWorld and zoo energy. <laughs> I was like, well, on Saturday, we rode the bus from the beginning to the end and back. And I was, I was like confused. Why isn't everybody excited? Just looking at me like, ugh, you're poor. If you're really poor, they take a whole year of your life and they don't even tell you. And you don't even realize it until you're an adult. Like I just learned this. When you're a really poor kid, you are two years old until you're four years old. 
I didn't understand that at all until my son turned three. In America, I've learned, in America, three years old is when they start charging you full price. <laughs> three years old in America is when you need your own ticket to get in here. I could feel the energy in this room. A lot of you guys are just like me. We had the same childhood, right? You would go to the amusement park every once in a while, but before you went in there, your parents were like, come here, come here right now, come here. Everyone, come here right now. <laughs> Come here, listen to me. If anybody in here asks you how old you are, you're two. But I'm eight, mommy. Listen, you wanna go to Disneyland or not? You're two, now climb in this stroller right now. Tuck your legs and suck your thumb right now. You're two until you're four. <laughs> you just realize stuff. When you become a parent, you realize stuff about your childhood. You base it on your kids. Right? I, realize my, I realize my son's gonna have a different relationship with the police than me, mostly because of his white face, but he's gonna have a different <sighs> pin drop, silent. <laughs> I already know you guys like my comedy. You were dying at the two until four thing. I can hear all the white buttholes right here in the front, just whoop! <laughs> two until four, hilarious. This is too real. <laughs> my son's relationship with the cops is gonna be different than mine, mostly because of his white face, also because I could tell his vibe. My son's whole vibe is like, yeah, officer, I saw him, they went that way. <laughs> there was three of them, they I could describe them, yeah. I'll come to the station, hold on real quick. Bros, bros, take my hoverboard. I'm gonna go to the station with them. <laughs> Here's the real reason why his relationship with cops will be different than mine. It's because the way I'm teaching him. Like I have friends that are police officers. Shout out to any, there's police officers here. Shout out to all the first responders. I'm not raising him to be afraid of them. They're just people, right? Doing a job, right? But that's not how I was raised. The way I was raised, I don't know if some of you guys shared this, but my Japanese mom raised four black kids. So every time we saw the cops and we were driving around, my mom would be like, shh, be quiet, don't move, it's the cops. And we would freeze in the car. <laughs> every time she saw the cops, she would tell, shh, be quiet, it's the cops. And we would just freeze. And when you're a little kid, you don't question your parents' rules at all. You just do whatever they tell you. It's not until later when you start thinking, like, what the hell? <sighs> you don't tell them, but in your head, you're like, look at mom, it's not illegal to be a kid <laughs> talking in your own car. <laughs> also, how are they gonna hear us from way over there? It doesn't matter who you are. Every single one of us had parents with weird rules. Right? And those weird rules get stuck in your lizard brain and you will be an adult going through life today and find yourself doing something weird. You're like, why do I do this? Oh, my mom made me do that, oh, okay. I'm almost 38 years old to this day. When I'm driving around, if I see the cops, I will turn the radio down and freeze for a second. <laughs> I'm not raising my kid like that. Like you guys have toddlers, like all toddlers love first responder vehicles, like any car with lights on there, little toddlers love. I took my son to the park the other day, and we're the only like family at the park, and there was an off-duty police officer there, just sort of chilling, and my son walks to the edge of the park, and he's just staring at the police car, right? And there was a lady cop in there, she rolls the window down, she yells out to my son, she goes, oh my God, you're so cute! Do you want me to turn the lights on? And my son was very bold. He was like, uh-huh. <laughs> and this lady turns the lights on and my son is just staring at the police car. Best day of his life, private light show, just like, oh my God. <laughs> what did I do to deserve this amazing free light show just for him? It's just him, he's the only kid in light show. All right, her partner pulls up behind her. This guy rolls his window down. And he was like, hey, you want me to turn my lights on too? And my son was like, uh-huh. <laughs> this guy turns his lights on 
And then I could see my son, his face, best day ever, private light show, just looking at this car, looking back at this car. I hear the lady cop say to my son, she goes, is he okay? And my son turns around, I'm behind him, just frozen, just frozen. <laughs> be cool, dude, be cool. <laughs> My son's an asshole. He, looked, he turns right around, says to the cop, he goes, don't worry about him, officer. He grew up poor. And then he went right back. <laughs> Every once in a while, I look at my current life through my fifth grade, like, poor kid eyes, and I'm grateful, right? I realized the other day, if fifth grade me saw my life right now, he would think that I made it. He would think that I'm rich, Houston. He would think that I'm rich based on my silverware drawer alone, the silverware drawer. I have confidence, I can invite this whole front row to my house and make dinner. Every single one of you would get all the forks, all the spoons, the, all the knives, and they would all look exactly the same. You know why? Because I bought them from the same store at the same time. It's a set. Some of you grew up like me. The silverware drawer at your house, nothing matched in there, nothing. It was just a Frankenstein collection of tools. These are all utensils from restaurants your parents are comfortable stealing from. Here's the number one thing in my silverware drawer that fifth grade me would be so impressed by, right? I'm not trying to flex on you, Irving, at all. All right, but in my silverware drawer at home, I got an ice cream scoop in the drawer. <laughs> Sounds like 25% of you understand what a big deal that is. I got a spoon that was scientifically made to scoop one thing. That's all it's for, ice cream. When you were a little kid, when you were a poor little kid, you would go to your friend's house and you would make notes in your head without even knowing it. It's just what poor kids do. Like, I remember going to sleepovers, and if the mom was like, okay, we're gonna have ice cream, and she busted out an ice cream scoop, I would make mental notes. I was like, yeah, they got money in this house. This is a money house. We're coming back here on Halloween for sure. This is a full-size candy bar house, I could tell. If I went to your house and your mom busted out an ice cream scoop with a <laughs> that thumb piece on there, I was like, oh my God, they must be descendants of Baskin or Robin. I'm not even sure. I don't even know where you get that. <laughs> Some of you guys are just like me. You didn't have an ice cream scoop growing up. You had an ice cream spoon. And this is not a spoon made for ice cream. It's just the biggest spoon your parents had. Two times a year you would get ice cream. On your birthday when you got A's in school, your mom would be like, someone get the ice cream, someone get the spoon. And sometimes your freezer would do such a good job, you would go to get ice cream and it would bend that spoon all the way back. <laughs> but bend it all the way back. And that's when someone at your house would say the poorest sentence of all time. The ice cream's not ready yet, leave it out a little bit longer. <laughs> bend that spoon back though, bend that spoon back. <laughs> if I went to your house and your mom had an ice cream scoop, or if I peed at your house and the toilet water was blue, I was like, they got money in here. <laughs> then you get your first apartment, you go to Target one time, you're like, we could have had all this for $18, what the hell? <laughs> I realized the other day, uh, we're raising our kids white, I realized that the other day. <laughs> I could see some of the white faces in the front are looking at me like, what do you mean? You know exactly what the hell I mean. I'm participating, it's bad. <laughs> the other day I'm watching my son, it's just me and him, and he starts throwing a tantrum. And I was like, hey, hey, hey! And he stops and he looks at me, and I look at him in his eyes and I go, take a deep breath. <laughs> I said, take a deep breath and count to three. I felt dirty on the inside of my body. You guys, this is what made me so mad. I got so mad because it worked! It worked! <laughs> this kid stopped in his tracks. He took a cartoonishly deep breath. <gasps> <sighs> and he could count. He counted out loud. One, two, three. And he looks me in my eyes and he goes, I'm sorry, Daddy. And then he tucked his hair behind his ear. 
Austin, Texas, my name is Mel Hall. Thank you so much. Let me into my zone, please don't let me into my zone. Uh, let me into my zone, let me, let me into my zone. Uh, let me into my zone, please don't let me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go and play that. Take you down, I'ma say that. Mine need me a couple dollars. Telling you now this payback. Huh, so I take that. Ask them now, we'll say that. I've been going to the top and I got what they not, so I know that they hate that. Uh, but I'm on now. All these lanes gonna zone out. And all these lanes gonna take what I did and they switch and they worse till I fall out. Uh, but I know that, so I keep what I'm doing cause I own that And I stay in the lab and I kill everything but I don't ever move, I'm a code that So don't, I'm gone, finally back in my home I'm working like so much, they swear I had me a clone Can't answer my phone now, just leave it there that tone Ballin' can't keep me up cause I'm back in my zone now Cause I'm back in my zone now Now. All in can't beat me up cause I'm back in my zone now Back in my zone now Let me into my zone, please don't let me into my zone. Let me into my zone, let me, let me into my zone. Let me into my zone, please don't let me in. Please don't let me into my zone. I just need some time on my own. All these people trying to get a conversation, you can conversate to that tone. Uh, my God up on that throne, yeah. So I'm never alone, yeah. All these people trying to box me in, I may weather, it's on, yeah. Now they ask where I'm at, making his that line back. I'm MJ, I'm 2 3, man. I just need some time back. I'm zoned in like you. My life gone, no recess, but I live my best one, so I got no regrets. So don't, I'm gone, finally back in my home. I'm working like so much, they swear I had me a clown. Can't answer my phone now, just leave it there, that tone. Ballin' can't beat me up, cause I'm back in my zone now. Cause I'm back in my zone now. All in can't beat me up cause I'm back in my zone now Back in my zone now Let me in my zone Let me let me in my zone uh, Let me in my zone Please don't let me in my zone uh, Let me in my zone Let me let me in my zone uh, Let me in my zone Please don't let me in my zone Let me let me in my zone Let me let me in my zone Let me in my zone. Let me let me in my zone. Let me in my zone.